Good morning. Welcome to the prayer porch. It's exciting to have you back today for a wonderful week in the Lord and just putting his word in our heart. Lord, I love you and I praise you. I thank you for your promises. Thank you for your promises that you tell us are yes because you said them. And amen. It's it. Once you promise it, it's done. It's There's no questioning it. That you are faithful in your promises. Lord, I thank you for that. And I thank you that in your faithfulness and your promises that you know us. You know us intimately. You know what we need. You know our every want. You know our desire. And you tell us that you choose that for us. So, Lord, I pray that you align the desires of my heart with your heart. That I may have a kingdom heart of desires. That I may have a heart that has desires to see your kingdom flourish. And that in that, I just draw closer to you. I praise your holy name and I thank you for this time. Lord, I pray a special prayer right now for Samuel's, for Samson's daughter. Lord, he's been so faithful in praying for us here. And I just pray, Lord, that you would just lift her up and that you would put your covering over her and that she would just touch her own body and that you would heal. And Lord, I pray your peace that passes all understanding on Samson and his wife because I know as a parent it's harder to see your child go through it than it is to go through it yourself. So, Lord, I just pray over them. And I pray your protection, your healing, and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. I am, um, before I go further, right before I came on this porch, I have met a wonderful friend through the prayer porch. His name is Samson, and he is so faithful. He prays over the prayer porch, sends a text prayer every morning and every night, and sometimes even in the middle of the day as God leads him. And his prayers are so spot on and they're so appreciative and I'm just so grateful for them because he prays for each of you too who are listening. And so he has uh, texted me this morning and he has asked if I would lift his daughter in prayer and I we had time of prayer together. And then I asked him, I said, where two or more are gathered do you mind if i invite those on our prayer porch to share and uh we had a quick facetime i'm not very good at that because i don't hear very well so we had to stop it and go back to texting um and he said that would be great so samson please know that all of our friends here on the prayer porch are lifting your daughter up and what samson has shared with me is that uh it's their opposite of us, so they're getting ready. It's nighttime for them as we're getting ready for morning. Um, but with that, he his wife has had to take their daughter to the hospital. She's not feeling well, and um, and that's hard when we have to take our little ones to the uh, hospital because they're not feeling well and we don't know what's going on. So we're going to pray for that. We're going to pray for healing. I ask that you join Samson and I today as we pray for healing in his daughter and we just pray for their peace because when he, as he was sharing with me and I just heard and felt the compassion of a father, I was just reminded as I talked about yesterday, the special treasures, those moments when I was holding my children and I felt helpless. I didn't know what to do. I knew they weren't well. And I just, I just needed God's peace for me and his healing for my child. So Samson, we pray that over you and your daughter and those of you out here in my, um, prayer porch family I just pray that you would lift them up that today you would lift Samson up and um, and his daughter they are over in Africa and they're faithful they're faithful to listen on the prayer porch and faithful in prayer uh, definitely someone who uses his gifts of giving which is actually what our verse was about today it was interesting after Samson and I talked and I came down and my verse for the day, it actually talks about taking what God has given us, the gifts that God has given us, and whether that be, and sometimes people read the scripture and they think, oh, this is a prosperity scripture where you're going to, and you know what, there are people that God bless financially because he blesses you financially, he promises you that. If you're faithful in your finances, that he will guard and protect those finances and he will share them so that his kingdom can grow. We need finances for his kingdom to grow. But we also, it's more than what my husband and I have. Um, like Brian is so wonderful with um, this ministry and he's learned so much in financial ministry and just understanding biblical finance. And the more you understand biblical finance, the more that you just realize that 
that money God has given you um, and your resources that God has given you are kingdom resources. And um, it, it's just, it's way more than I can get into today. And it's just a wonderful thing. And maybe I'll bring Brian back another time. But I want to talk about the even deeper resources because we automatically want to think money. Money is a man thing. That's a man thing. But God's seeds are amazing. God uses mammon. God uses man's money. But he also uses every seed that he places in you. What do you do with what God's given you? Whether he's given you the ability to, and I, I just, with Samson, Samson has blessed my life because he has sown seeds of prayer. He is a prayer warrior like none I've ever seen. And God has given him insight. It'll be like something will be bothering me that day. I will not have said a word. And Samson, boom, prays, sends a prayer, and it's right on spot. And he says, sister, God doesn't want you to, do, to be worried about this. God doesn't want, release this. Let this go. And every time he's spot on because he's aligned himself with God in that seed. And he takes that seed and he throws it out in abundance because God has given it to him. He's not hesitant to throw it out. I know other people who minister in our church. And that's how I met Samson because he was throwing that seed out. And another sister of mine at church who has a powerful ministry as well online. And, um, and she started it from her son who started it through Billy Graham. I mean, it's just like dominoes, but that seed, that seed, that seed. And now here's Samson saying, I've sown that seed. I need that seed of prayer sown back. And I, there is no doubt in my mind that God's going to pour that out in abundance. So I'm asking you, if it is hospitality, open your doors. Open your doors. God's going to provide what you need to host that. God, if it is prayer, God's going to give you that insight that you need with prayer. If it is to because you are blessed with handling money, then God's going to bless you with that not so that you can buy your big yachts. Maybe he'll provide you a yacht, but I promise you if he does, that yacht will be used for ministry because that's how it is. God says, I will, I am so for and bolder mine. Everything in it is here is mine. I will give you what you need, just like I would for my children. I will get my children what they need so that they can be all that they can be. Being all that we can be is being all of God's children. So if it's preaching as you get preach, if it's teaching, by golly, teach in abundance and throw that seed. If it's praying, pray. If it's financial, pray. Whatever it is, God's going to multiply it as you trust him with it. The more you give him, the more you will be given back to be able to continue to give. And that's what the scripture today is about. And I love the scripture. And I brought my glasses today because I went back and re-listened yesterday and stammering over that reading was ridiculous. So here I am. I am going to be able to really read. Yay. <laughs> um, if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and I encourage you to read the whole chapter, but I am going to skip down a little bit and um, I'm going to start at verse 6. And it says, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds is going to get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. Do not give reluctantly and do not respect. And, and oh, here I am stammering. Do not give reluctantly to uh, or in response to pleasure, to pleasure. So don't just give, don't hesitantly, well, I'll give this, but I really don't. And I'll have you in my house, but I really don't want you here. Or I'll pray for you and then really not pray for them. Or I will, I'm going to give this money in the offering plate, but gosh, I need to get change. He says, don't give reluctantly, but also don't give in response to pleasure, pressure. Don't let people pressure you into it. God will tell you what to give and when to give. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. Give it all you got. He loves to see you laughing when you're in an awful spot. So when the odds are all against you and you cannot do a thing, praise God. To praise him is a joyous thing. And God will generously provide all that you need. Then... You will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures tell us. So here's scripture, quoting scripture. 
And it says, as the scripture tells us, they share freely and they give generously to the poor and their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is one, God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and bread for them to eat. In the same way, he's gonna provide an increase for your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Wow, a great harvest of generosity in me. That sounds exciting to me. I, I love the idea that God can use me as a storehouse. That God says, Lori, when someone needs prayer, they're gonna come to you. When someone needs food to eat, they're gonna come to you. When somebody needs a positive word, they're gonna come to you. Because I've sown those seeds in your life, Lori. That's what I've given you. When someone comes for wisdom and discernment, you've asked me for wisdom and discernment since you were a child. So you need to give that back. I've poured that in. You need to serve that and give that back. You need to put it on a platter and give it to my children. What has he put in your seed? What is your seed? If you're not sure what your seed is and what you're supposed to be giving out generously, <clears throat> then ask God, Lord, tell me what you sowed in me. What's in my garden? What's here in my garden? And once he reveals it to you, say, Lord, how can I make that seed grow and give it away? How can I give it away so that it will reseed and increase and continue to increase so that I can touch more and more and more people with what you have seeded in me? So I'm asking you, what's your seed? What seed has he sown in you? And are you sowing that seed in return generously? Because it's fall now. And there's a lot of seed pods out there. I see the ground covered in acorns that all come from one tree. You have acorns. What are you doing with them? Just ask him. If you're not sure what your seed is, ask him. In the meantime, those of you who are my prayer warriors on here, and I know I have some amazing prayer warriors, let's lift a fellow prayer warrior up. Let's lift Samson and his daughter up. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your seed. May we be good farmers and may we nurture that seed. May we write it on our heart. May we give it away so that others may have and be touched by you. And may we always be reminded that that seed is not our own, that that seed is you. It's yours from you. We are just the farmer. <laughs> but it's fun being a farmer on your farm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your seed. I love you and I praise you. In Jesus' name. Have a great day. Hey, let's go find some seed.